Uh, hi, Anthony. Hi, everyone. Uh, as Anthony has mentioned, my name is Clara. I'm a second year math with economics student at UCL. Uh, and I am half Spanish, half Namibian. I was born, I grew up in Namibia, but my parents are Spanish. And, you know, it's a privilege to be here today and share any insight that might be valuable for you. And we'll answer in your question, the reason for why helping women, I mean, it just stems down to wanting to help other people. When you help people, people want to help you. And I guess my um, journey into finance was very, was, I was very lucky, I must say. I started my first year of university, um, you know, mainly studying maths. I had no idea about the finance industry, uh, you know, growing up in a small town in Africa and then, you know, in Spain, neither in Spain or Namibia, it's not a financial hub. So finance wasn't a thing in my mind, but I started first year of uni and everyone was like, super competitive like it, I hadn't even started classes yet and like everyone was like do you have LinkedIn do you have your cover letter do you have your CV and I was like I don't even know why I need all of this in the first place so um, I mean I decided to get involved in many societies join many random societies met lots of people and perhaps one of the societies I liked the most because of the people and the students was UCL Women in Finance Society uh, I had a few older students that were really kind to me. They offered me a position as first year representative. And that's kind of how I began uh, being a bit curious about the finance industry. And that's when I started doing my research in, into finance. And um, I realized that because I was in a four year course, I wasn't eligible to apply to spring weeks. So I was like, oh, okay, I will figure that whole process out next year. I'm gonna first you know, focus on my degree and I'll just focus on maths and understanding everything. Uh, but towards like October, November, UCL Women Finance hosted this amazing event with a really inspiring woman from BMP. Uh, and she was this really senior lady. Um, and from, and it was like, I think it was on a Monday. So I wasn't very sure if I wanted to attend or not, but it was my friend who was organizing and I was like, okay, let me just go and support the course. So it was on a Monday afternoon, the senior lady from BMP coming in to give a talk on Zoom. We were literally five women in the room, only five. Mm. So it was a very one-to-one -one conversation. Uh, it turns out that this lady also studied maths at UCL and I really just felt inspired by her. I didn't know much about what she was doing, didn't really understand much about markets, but I felt very inspired by this woman, right? And I think that's mm. something that's been very crucial to me, that where I can actually see that there's really like high up women up there that, you know, have a solid career, but they also have, you know, a family and they can manage both was something that really intrigued me because I want both in the end, right? Hmm. So she encouraged me to apply to spring weeks and I went in applying to spring weeks, not knowing the difference between markets and banking. I just did it because I liked the woman. Oh, I felt super <laughs> inspired. Oh, okay, let me just apply. So that's what I did. Um, I think sometimes, well, 98% of things in life comes through like hard work and discipline and, you know, motivation for what you're doing. And then 2% is luck. And that was my 2% of luck. I was meeting this woman and applying. So I got through the process, joined the Springs, and I really enjoyed it. Um, and that's kind of how my career in finance started, mm -hmm. inspired by, by this lady and um, forming part of a community, I think is really important as well. Because in the end, when you talk to students and I talk to girls, we're all going through the same thing. We all feel very intimidated, very lost. You never feel like you're good enough. And that sometimes can put you off. Uh, but talking to other women and to other girls, you, you realize you're not alone. And if you really want it, then you just have to be willing to put yourself out there. Um, so forming part of this community and meeting this woman was great. Um, and after I joined the Springs, uh, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed talking to so many people from different roles, from different desks. Uh, and I realized that this could be a you know, potential career for me. And that's what, uh, why I decided to take up the summer analyst uh, program at Amplify, because as I said, I had no idea about finance. Even during the spring weeks, I still didn't really understand the difference between markets and banking. And I was like, okay, if I want to do this, I should actually start from the basis. And that was really fundamental for me. Uh, actually, through the summer analyst program, I met a few other girls. Um, I think Gabriela, Flavia, they were also, you were interviewing them. For me, they've been fundamental. Flavia has been such a great mentor and also seen uh, a, another woman slightly older than me that's gone through the process before me and having her mentor me and help me has been really fundamental in pushing me and making me go forward. Um, so I guess the whole reason for helping women is because I've been helped by women in the first place, right? And I feel that kind of like my responsibility that the little I know and the little advice I can give, offer it on. Um, and yeah, it's just been, I'm still in the journey of, of learning and very excited to do so. So, so. so. Where did your confidence come from? Because you, you know, you talk about um, 
you know, having discipline and being persistent and being tenacious and like all these other kind of characteristics. But a lot of people find that very hard to be that way. Like, where where's that come from for you? I mean, I don't know. Uh, I must say that confidence depends on the day. There's days that you're just on top of the world and you feel like you can do anything and you're, you know, you're going to smash life and you can do it. And then other days you're just rock bottom. You're just like, I'm so lost. I'm so stressed. I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, and I think it's so really important to be aware of the fact that it's okay to sometimes be like that. And then those days where you're just not feeling it and you feel like you're not going to be able to do anything, just fake it, you know, just push through, just keep your eye on the prize and what you want to do. And, and you know, that phrase, fake it till you make it, that has been so fundamental to everything I do. Um, uh, but I guess, you know, discipline, hard work. Um, I don't know. I think it's been a lot in my education, how my parents brought me up from a young age. I think around the age of four or five, I started doing rhythmic gymnastics, which has been really, you know, has been fundamental in developing me as a person. Uh, I guess we trained for many hours every day, Monday to Saturday. We also competed. Um, and I guess that's really helped me and shaped me and my mindset. So I know that hard things and objectives and goals that you really want don't come easily. Uh, sometimes we're not patient with ourselves. We're really accustomed to living in a world where things come now, right? We snap our fingers, we go on the internet, we have access to information now. We, we can answer people now, right? But hard things and challenges don't come easily and they don't come now. So I think it's very important to, first of all, be aware of being patient with yourself. And that's something that gymnastics told me that, you know, if you're just slightly more flexible the next day, then it's a win. It's fine. You know, just continue. You know, the power of compounding is fundamental. Um, and then discipline as well has helped me, especially with, you know, when you don't feel like you're, you're good enough or you're not like, you know, you're not going to be able to achieve anything. Just be disciplined with yourself and continue doing what you're doing every single day. I think sometimes people overlook the power of day-to-day -day work because we're so lost in that future objective and what we want to achieve in five to 10 years time, right? But don't forget about today. You know, every day is a new beginning and it can be so powerful that if you're consistent that way, you can achieve anything. Mm -hmm. And then I guess confidence, well, you know, just comes up and down. Um, I think it's very important to be honest with yourself and understand what you're good at and what you're not. I mean, no one's perfect. We all do mistakes. And you shouldn't be afraid of that. You shouldn't be afraid of making mistakes. You shouldn't be afraid of putting yourself out there because if you want something, you have to be willing to take the hit. You know, it's like mm -hmm. when you compete in competitive sport and you decide to, you know, um, I don't know, participate in a championship, then obviously you have this amazing opportunity to win. But in order to win, you have to be willing to, you know, lose or, you know, potentially lose. And it's completely fine. Like, you know, like your life doesn't end in one day. You just mm -hmm. continue and continue trying if that's something you really want. So, so when you're having these like meetings with your societies or you're in the various different forms that you're involved in, like how much of the general conversations are around more of the mindset and, and getting people in the right state of mind rather than the technical side of things? Unfortunately, not so much. And I think that's one of the problems that mm. people feel that they're not allowed to talk about these things. They have to... I mean, coming into uni, uh, I must say that I felt very intimidated. You know, you live in this bubble where, you know, you're just top of the class and you're just wonderful and all that stuff. And then suddenly you, you face reality. You just realize you're just one more person in this entire world. And there's thousands of people that are so competitive, so prepared, that are smarter or better or, you know, in any sense, better than you. Uh, and that can be intimidating. And um, I think that's sometimes why it puts girls off to apply because they just feel they're not good enough but I think it's very and not only they don't feel they're not good enough but they're not allowed to voice it they're not allowed to voice their fears because everyone seems like they have everything under control when I think more often than not we're all just struggling with our own life and struggling to you know fit our priorities in and make the most of them um, so unfortunately it's not something that um, has been voiced that much uh, actually recently we had this um, HSBC event that you participated in and after the event we got really good feedback and throughout campus lots of girls stopped me and said thank you so much because I felt very inspired and you know actually forming part of a community and noticing that we're all at the same level uh, has really motivated them to you know apply in the future to HSBC and other firms um, so I think we should definitely make a push to talk more about imposter syndrome 
and more about failure and the fact that it's not as dramatic as it seems. Like we should not be drama queens, like we've all failed. And the thing is, you only need that one shot at success, right? If you fail nine out of the 10 times, you just need once, once to success, that's enough. So I think it's very important to, you know, relativize all of this, the fact that you're not good enough, that you're not, you're not perfect, that you make mistakes, it's fine. And, um, and that's something that my team and I have been trying to push a lot to open up the dialogue and the conversation. Um, and you know, just make everyone aware that we're all on the same boat, actually. Well, look, I'm sure you wouldn't mind me saying that I'll share your LinkedIn profile with anywhere we share this video. And I'm sure that they, you know, doesn't matter if you're UCL or not. It's uh, it's just important, I think, for, for the communities to, to work to work together for the better. Uh, but tell me a little bit about what's happening in the summer then. So where are you where are you heading and, and what's the plan? Of course, so in the summer, I'll be joining BMP uh, within global markets. So I'm really, really excited. Uh, I mean, for, I can't believe that I'm here in London, you know, starting to work, having the opportunity to learn. Uh, I haven't yet chosen my guests, but, you know, I've been talking to many analysts. And the more I talk to people, the more interested I am in the role. So, for example, the other day I talked about to my buddy, he's in the high yield credit desk, which sounds super interesting to me. And then another analyst who is right now in the private structuring, private credit structuring this also sounds really interesting so i'll be joining bmp uh hoping so to make on, the a, most... on a tip on that point alone those other people you just mentioned how did you find them were they so, ucl or you my... just networking on linkedin or right so my buddy i just got paired with him uh like through the whole spring like a uh, summer process um i guess in many summer internships you get paired with a buddy and i guess my Number one advice is make the most of, of your buddy because he's there or she's there to want to help you. And I guess asking him, asking his advice about what roles he thought would be, you know, good for me. He introduced me to his friend who's in the private credit uh, structuring desk. And then I talked to him and it sounded really interesting. Um, so I think uh, coming in when you think about networking, it can be very intimidating because you think about these people as if they're robots, right? They're analysts working at BMP and you can't bother them and you don't have sufficient technical knowledge to ask them anything. But actually they're people. And I think it's very important to keep in mind that people connect with people and everybody independently of their job has hobbies, has a family, has, has other things, has a life, right? So, you know, coming in with that basis and connecting in that sense is very important. And I guess I've also been very lucky that no matter who I reached out to on LinkedIn, they have been very kind, very open, very willing to just go on a call and, you know, talk to me and tell me stuff, uh, even if it's 15 minutes of their time. That For me, that's been invaluable. And uh, I think that's important to be aware of, that people actually do want to help. Um, and then that's, and once you've been helped, it's your responsibility to help others that come behind you. I think just keeping that positive flow, flow going. Yeah. It's amazing. Well, look, I mean, it's been great to um, great to catch up. I think, you know, your enthusiasm, your passion, your authenticity, I think are amazing. And I'm sure it's going to hold you in very good stead, not just now, but your future career. So I'm yeah, happy to have been part of that journey with you. So um, yeah, thank you, Clara, for joining me. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll speak to you again next time. Well, thank you so much, Anthony. It's been a great privilege to talk to you here today. And as Anthony has mentioned, just feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'd be happy to try and help in any way. Thank you so much. Amazing. Thank you, Clara.